Hello and welcome to another tutorial session. My name is Michael Wetzel. This time I'm addressing in particular the translator community. I will show you in the short session how you configure our plugin for Trado Studio and how you use it in daily translation tasks. Um, of course, I assume you should be familiar with Trado Studio and you may also be familiar how to use a multi-term term base while translating, which is the default. Um, but thanks to Trado's pretty componentized architecture, um, uh, with our plugin, you are now able to directly connect to a Corian multilingual knowledge system. So you uh, have a live connection to another terminology resource, so to say. That's all about the theory for today. So let's jump in into the software. So let's assume uh, just a little example. So let's assume you are translating a technical document. Here's something about food choices from a, from a British uh, organization. And you have quite some technical terms in there when translating about materials and uh, guidance, legislation, etc. So here about food choice legislation. And and I'm using the Eurovoc thesaurus, which is hosted also in Corion. And in the Corion database, here in the Eurovoc thesaurus, you would find uh, appropriate terms that uh, could be really helpful for translating this document. So I will now show you how to basically direct, uh, directly connect from the Trado Studio environment to this uh, Corion database here. So let's switch over to the Trado Studio environment. So that's the typical editor view in Trado Studio. I'm about to translate. And now when it comes to the plugin, um, two things in principle. On the one hand, you should configure the plugin, namely to connect to the database. And you uh, then would use uh, that while translating. So how can you configure? So I assume the plugin is already loaded. You load the plugin like any other plugin for Trado Studio. Um, and then here in the term recognition window, you have a button project term base settings. And when I click on that, I see uh, the term bases that are selected for this project. Um, and you would see your multi-term term bases here. But under the Use menu, you would also see now not only multi-term term bases as a provider, but also a menu item that being the Corian terminology provider. So this is what comes with the plugin. Um, and in the Settings, you would then say uh, select which um, database or Corian repository uh, you would like to use. So I've selected already before this session the Eurook thesaurus here. So I confirm this and I'm now connected uh, to the uh, repository, to the database, and I start translating. So let's, for instance, uh, jump into that segment here, food choice legislation. And you see, I have no translation memory, by the way, running doing the demo here. And you see that I found uh, two terms, um, and these terms are now directly retrieved from the Corian repository. So I found food choice with the translations Fruchtsaft, Obstsaft, Fruchtsaft concentrat, and I've also found legislation being translated into German with something like Gesetzgebung, Gesetzesbestimmung. So um, the interaction for you as a translator is uh, almost 100% identical how you use multi-term in this context. But now only the data is coming from a Corian repository. All the presentation of the view is as you're familiar with here in the term recognition window. So even when I start typing, you also see the red brackets here highlighting the found terms in the source segment. So when I start typing full choice legislation, that would be something like Gesetzgebung für Fruchtsaft or so. So when I type in, let's say I hit the first uh, letter G here, and then also in the context menu in Trado Studio in the editor, we pull the uh, German translations and we can autocomplete them here and uh, basically start or continue typing. Um, so that integrates as smoothly as multi-term is, is present in the Trado Studio environment. Um, pretty straightforward. Just maybe another example here. I go to, well, the number seven, nothing to be found, but maybe here, the segment labeling, I'm finding one record out from the Eurovoc thesaurus, um, etiquettierung. So two things I'd like to highlight uh, or I'd like to mention with regards to how to configure what you see in the term recognition window 
um, and what to see uh, further about just the terms. Let me jump back to that segment. Uh, Gesetzgebung. And the first thing that we would like to see, you may be familiar with, is that here I only see the translation, that I would like to see some more details about that uh, term, full choice. And when I click view term details, um, I can see here the complete entry or the complete concept uh, retrieved from the Eurovector source. So I see the English terms or the German terms or the attributes, additional information with it as with multi-term, in fact. Um, but um, if you would like to see more about that concept now, you know, uh, in Corion, data is organized in the knowledge graph. So here's a link directly into the uh, database, into the repository. And when you click that uh, button, um, then the browser window is opening and we directly navigate uh, to the link in uh, in Corion. So you see here, we are positioned on food juice underneath an alcohol beverage, and you see all the accompanying terms with it um, um, and all the other languages here highlighted in the browser as required. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. Um, and the other thing um, is when it comes to configuring what you see in the hit list here. So by default, as with multi-term, we only see the terms, but um, we can configure these hit lists uh, through the hit list settings. And uh, you're familiar with that dialog box here. I select a bit which fonts, which colors the terms are being displayed with. Um, but I can also select the fields. So for instance, when I click select fields here, I see the model of the, or in multi-term that's called a term-based definition, in Corian that's called repository model. I see basically which kind of uh, data categories, which, which kind of properties are available. And let me select the usage for the target term here. And when I click that one here, and I click OK, I see here for all the terms immediately also these their attributes. So we see that fruit juice shall be preferably translated with Fruchtsaft only al with an alternative term being Obstsaft or Fruchtsaftkonzentrat. So that's one aspect. Uh, we can pull in also further information from an entry directly here into the term recognition window. But one thing I'd like to particularly highlight is that in the hit list settings here, um, there is one field which is not directly coming from uh, from the repository model, but which we kind of inject here is namely a field called broader. And when I select this field, I will see in the term recognition window not only the the entries with their terms that had that have been found, but we see also the broader concept. So, for instance, uh, we see that Fruchtsaft, fruit juice is has a, a broader concept it, which is filed in the knowledge graph in Corion under non as a term like non-alcoholic beverage and for instance the uh, the term legis legislation legislation as found is filed underneath a source of law so we pull in uh, knowledge graph information and render is as a product concept here and this is particularly helpful obviously when you think about translating when it comes to homonyms so that you know uh, same terms um, but uh, you don't know which which is the good translation for it and when you see immediately the uh, the broader concepts it's faster for disambiguation which target term to select so, so far about my little demo, how the Trado Studio uh, and the Corian terminology plugin is working. Um, let me quickly summarize our little session for today. So you've learned how to enable and configure the plugin. You select your repository, select the languages, how to use the repository while translating, and also how to benefit from the knowledge graph information while translating. So far, so far for today, before I say bye-bye, as always, feel free to ping me via email, follow myself or Corian on Twitter, um, learn about the business impact and the potential of multilingual knowledge systems on our blog, and of course, do not miss any Corian news by subscribing to our newsletter. was a pleasure for today. Thank you from my side. Until next time. Ciao.